Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're talking about a topic that is getting ever more attention here in 2022, the relationship between edge computing and cloud computing. We'll look at how companies can best support their edge to cloud technology. To discuss that, I'm joined by a major industry expert. With me is Sachin Kade, Network and Edge Group CTO at Intel. Sachin, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, James, for having me. Delighted to be here. Great. So let's talk about the state of, of cloud edge technology. I mean, obviously, cloud has gotten a lot of investment in the last decade or so, massive amount of investment. It's, it's, it's become pretty much the, the default enterprise IT deployment. Edge is also growing really rapidly. Uh, to, to what extent are these two enab enabling each other? No, great question. And I think uh, the edge is actually about to enter that uh, hockey stick uh, growth phase as from all the stuff uh, that we're seeing out there from our customers. So maybe if, uh, if I take a step back, what's happening at the edge, I think is being powered by what I call edge native workloads. Hmm. And what I mean by that is these are applications of workloads that uh, need to or prefer to live at the edge for a variety of reasons. For example, the reason could be that this is an application that needs to run uh, at a physical location, even if it is disconnected from the internet, right? So think for example, all the apps that need to run in a Walmart store. Right, uh, they can't afford to shut the store down because the internet connectivity to the store is down. Or these are applications that uh, need to run uh, at the edge uh, because of uh, governmental regulations, right? So a healthcare system cannot actually is not allowed because of data sovereignty regulations to run it in the cloud. So there's that kind of edge native uh, applications, or it might be just economically too expensive, right? So if you're building a security camera system or whatnot, shipping raw video to the cloud is just too expensive. So uh, economic uh, reasons might force you to run this uh, kind of workload at the edge, video analytics, for example, right? So there's this growth of edge native applications and correspondingly edge computing platforms that are going to power uh, these edge native applications, right? But often uh, these applications will leverage the cloud as a backend for longer term storage, uh, for coordination across multiple edge locations. So the cloud almost becomes the orchestration system for a variety of edge computing systems that are deployed in a highly distributed fashion. So uh, kind of if I take a step back and reflect on your question, there is this class of applications that we call edge native workloads mm -hmm. that are going to power the growth. And it's driven by these shifts around remote work, right? So people need distributed networking and security software. Uh, it's driven by, uh, the because of labor shortages and inflation, uh, the need to digitize and automate your physical infrastructure. So that's another theme that will continue to happen. And it's driven by privacy and governmental regulation. So you need to keep data at the edge. Mm -hmm. That will continue to grow, but they will use the cloud as a backend and for orchestration uh, to actually manage these highly distributed deployments. So almost look at the cloud as kind of the orchestration and the management plane and these edge native applications as doing the lot of the work uh, closer to the edge because of a variety of reasons. So they're obviously they're very closely intertwined. I, I'm I'm thinking, correct me if I'm wrong. There there almost is no such thing as an edge deployment that doesn't have at least some cloud with it. Correct or not? Yeah, and I think uh, we should clarify, right? So even an edge deployment will use cloud technologies, mm -hmm. right? So they will they will want to use Kubernetes. They will want to use uh, uh, modern DevOps tool chain. So many of the technologies that developers use in the cloud people want to use even at the edge because they're all used to doing uh, managing systems that way, right? And then in addition, uh, they will use cloud computing capabilities uh, because it gives you that burst capacity, right? So the edge may not be fully provisioned. So you may need to be able to use the cloud computing capacity to offset certain needs. You may you need to use the cloud as the logically centralized management engine uh, to, to, to manage these systems. So they kind of go hand in hand uh, because that's the cloud is where it's easier to quickly add stuff, add management capabilities, add scale. Uh, whereas the edge is where you really need to sometimes process the data uh, close to the source. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to clarify the one term edge native. It's an interesting term in that we know you're cloud native which contrasts with these, you know, the, the legacy applications, maybe they were, you know, coded in 2006 and they, they lived in-house for many years and maybe a company did a lift and shift deployment to get them into the cloud, as opposed to cloud native, which is really born in the cloud. Right. What, what do you mean in terms of edge native? Were those, were those applications, they lived in-house and now they're on the edge? 
I think they were born in the edge. Yeah. Right. So, and uh, so a good example of this could be, let's say you are going to uh, these new modern retail stores that want to do cashierless checkout. Mm -hmm. Right. And so they want to use sensors and cameras to do visual checkout of your systems. That's a new application that didn't exist before. Right. And that needs to live at the store that needs to live at the edge. So it is born at the edge. So we really mean by edge native, uh, these newish applications uh, that were born and need to be at the edge cannot really live in the cloud because the latency or the reliable network uh, capability is not there. Mm -hmm. So, all right, as, as companies are looking for advice, they, they, they want to build an edge deployment, they have a cloud deployment, what do they need to know? What, what advice would you give them on getting started or, or building their existing deployment? Yeah, I think uh, several things that are different at the edge from the cloud, right? Which is uh, the first thing is it's highly distributed. Hmm. So it's not one place, right? It's, uh, it's multiple different places and you're managing your compute footprint across multiple locations, right? And you have to worry about all the issues that go wrong with distributed deployments, right? So you might have network connectivity issues, you might have power variability, you might have uh, constraints around how much compute or cooling you can deploy anywhere. Right. So uh, picking the uh, right compute platform and the corresponding cloud stack to deploy at the edge, which which can which is built from the ground up to handle these kinds of variations, are uh, super important. Mm -hmm. Second, I think the applications you'll run at the edge uh, are different. You don't need all of the machinery that the cloud provides. Right. So you don't need like large scale storage systems or you don't need really large scale uh, AI training engines or stuff like that, right? So you're mostly running inference, for example, at the edge, right? Because you will train the model in the cloud, but then you will push the model to the edge and you'll actually use it to run the inference and get an answer. But if you need to update the model, you may do small updates at the edge, but you will do the big training workload back in the cloud again, right? So the flavor of the workload that you'll run at the edge is gonna be quite different. Uh, from the one at the cloud. So uh, carefully pick what software stack components you put because at the edge you are, uh, the compute footprint is at a premium. You cannot have, you cannot get a thousand cores if you wanted to, right? So you'll have to build a more thinner stack uh, that you deploy at the edge and pay a lot of attention to orchestration and management, right? Because of this highly distributed nature, how do you make sure that uh, the operational complexity of managing such a highly distributed system does not overwhelm uh, your IT? and uh, really thinking through that piece uh, super important what about uh, you talked about this a little bit but i'd like to drill down into this the idea of data at the edge obviously the, the edge devices can't really crunch that data like they can back in headquarters what, what, what is your sense of handling data at the edge uh, i think what we are seeing is that uh, while the devices themselves don't crunch the data but let's say you go to a factory floor there's a lot of devices, there's a lot of sensors, there's a lot of control systems, they're all generating data. And uh, all of that data is getting consolidated into an edge computing platform that is deployed at the factory floor, mm -hmm. right? And so all of the software that is gonna process this data, run inference on it, even automate the control of many of these machines is pieces of software that are running on this edge computing platform. So we are kind of seeing this hierarchy emerge where previously you just had these devices and point specific systems and then the cloud, there is this midpoint emerging, which is this edge computing platform that's deployed on prem hmm. uh, that is going to be collecting data from all of these different sensors, doing process, processing that, doing workload consolidation of all these legacy systems as software applications into one platform and potentially eventually doing automation a lot of these control loops where humans are involved today, right? So that's uh, that's basically the edge in our definition. So the, the devices will continue to stay, uh, let's call it simple because they are gonna be power constrained and form factor constrained, but there are gonna be these edge computing platforms that is going to be systems that you deploy on-prem at a factory floor or a retail store or a logistics warehouse, wherever you think of it. Mm -hmm. So how is Intel addressing the cloud to edge needs of its clients? What, what is the Intel advantage? So I think uh, one of the VR for the, the the one of the unique things about the edge is there's no one single edge, right? There's uh, there's like thousand different verticals, each with their unique different needs, right? And we see this in uh, Intel in Network and Edge uh, with our IoTG business. Uh, this has serves retail, healthcare, logistics, all of these kinds of verticals. We see it at the network edge where we sell into telcos and uh, enterprise networking systems. 
uh, and security systems, right? So uh, I think one thing we are really doing is making sure that we have a family of SOCs that have the right kind of compute, the right kind of acceleration, and the right kind of networking and storage capabilities so that it hits your price and power operating point. But that's at the, let's call it the hardware programmable platform. The second piece we are doing is making sure that you have programmable software platforms on top that allow you to do these edge native applications. So we're building OpenVINO, for example, that takes in big AI models that are trained in the cloud and optimizes them to run on these uh, edge devices, right? So that you fit into the form factor here, you can run it at the uh, kind of compute and acceleration you'll have at the edge. Uh, we have uh, network fabric software. So things like IPDK that will allow you to connect all of these distributed edge locations into a core and fabric and actually manage them as a logical whole rather than a thousand different deployments, which would be an operational nightmare. Mm -hmm. So I think fundamentally we are thinking of uh, the edge and what are the pieces of software we need to build to help you think of this as a distributed coherent fabric that's connected to each other rather than having to deal with it as thousand different edge node systems, for example, right? And so try and tame the complexity of the edge as people build out these new systems. Yeah, you know, something you said earlier is really interesting. You talked about a midpoint. There's there's the cloud deployment and the edge deployment, but there's a right in between them. There's a, there's a midpoint. Maybe it's a platform that helps run the edge. I hope I understood you on that. Is is that part of the Intel offering? Yeah. So we are basically built. So this uh, the midpoint. What I was referring to in that point point was there was the cloud and there were the devices. Right. And in between, there is an edge computing platform that is getting deployed, built on top of Intel, right? So we obviously provide the programmable hardware platform. People are leveraging different flavors of cloud stacks, whether it's from VMware or Red Hat or any of the enterprise cloud providers, but building it for the edge, right? Not an on-prem data center, but the edge uh, deployment. It's usually like a single node or a three node kind of system. Mm -hmm. It's not a rack of servers, like right? just much smaller systems. And then there is another edge emerging, which is places like Equinix. Like Colo mm. Edge, right? right and right. that is also sitting between the public cloud and these kinds of systems. So I think there's multiple tiers of compute emerging at the edge that are all outside the public cloud. So you'll have on-prem compute, right? That those are at least one to three node kind of systems, maybe, or maybe more. Uh, so you would basically have a small cluster sitting at uh, every Walmart store or Target store or wherever, right? And uh, then there is Colo Edge where you can go put your own metal on demand at Equinix or some of these places, hosting facilities, and that's another kind of edge. And then there is a telco edge, right? So the telcos themselves are adding edge computing capability alongside their 5G cell towers or 5G core networks. And that is another piece of compute that you can access uh, that is outside the public cloud. So I think the, app, the future application is going to get highly distributed across all of these points rather than running it in one place in the public cloud. Hmm. Do you think several years out there will still be a division between the cloud and the edge? It seems like those worlds are merging and we're not going to know where the difference is between the two. I think from an application developer perspective, they should not. And honestly, they should not have to care. Right, So they need to focus on solving the business problem that they're solving. And we need to build systems uh, that can figure out how to partition the application that they write and run it at the right location, right? depending on latency, depending on bandwidth requirements, depending on reliability requirements. And I think that's the future state of the world, which is uh, there won't be a, a choice a developer has to make. Oh, am I running this in the public cloud? Am I running it in the Colo Edge? Am I running it on-prem? they're going to write an inference application or uh, maybe a metaverse application. And there's some intelligent system sitting in between that is going to figure out what part of this application do I need to run on-prem? What part do I need to run at the Colo or the Telco Edge? And what part do I need to run in the public cloud? So I think this, these uh, physical locations will get abstracted out uh, from the developer's perspective. Hmm. Well, let's look at the future of cloud edge uh, emerging technology and what role will artificial intelligence play in this specifically? I think AI is going to be kind of a horizontal technology that is going to power a lot of these applications, right? And we are already seeing this uh, edge to cloud continuum emerge in AI. So for example, uh, last week we spoke at Intel Vision about a lot of our customers doing federated learning, right? So they have uh, for example, a healthcare system that we highlighted that we worked with in New York uh, that uh, used our software to build a federated learning platform uh, to do early detection of COVID two years ago. Mm -hmm. So their idea was that every hospital is going to have data, but they cannot share this data. So I need to do some 
uh, local training there and then use federated learning to share data across hospitals. And that's where they could use the public cloud or some other location to be able to be that coordinator. And so as federated learning becomes the norm, because I do expect that privacy concerns will push AI to be more distributed in the future, uh, then essentially there's gonna be a lot of local training and inference happening at the edge. And the cloud will become the way to kind of federate and coordinate across uh, different locations or even across trust boundaries, right? Because the application here is that different healthcare providers who are not part of the same company should be able to share data and build better models, for example, in COVID, right? So to be able to do early COVID detection. Mm -hmm. So I think AI itself is going to get highly distributed and federated. And that's where this edge to cloud continuum definitely has to be playing a strong role in enabling that to happen. When you say federated in, in that sense, you mean it's, it's distributed, but also divided? Or what, what does federated mean exactly in, in that world? So the first and foremost, it is distributed, right? So across multiple locations and second it right. is distributed across locations with trust boundaries so for example uh, there will be Stanford Hospital running something here and then uh, UCSF running uh, another another federated learning model but they find a way to share data across these trust boundaries mm -hmm. and actually build better models uh, for 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 health health applications right mm -hmm. and so that kind of world where data is exchanged across trust boundaries but the data is in a federated learning form rather than raw data, which they cannot do, uh, that's that's emerging. Hmm. Sasha, you, you said quite a bit. Is there any last thought you'd like to add about cloud edge, edge technology? It's a fascinating new world. Uh, I, I think I'll leave uh, the audience with that uh, statement that I started with, which is that um, there is this new class of applications emerging, which are not cloud native, but edge native. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's going to be driven by the need for people to do digitization and automation of physical infrastructure to handle labor shortages, right? That's going to be a primary driver. And the need for enterprises to support distributed work models, right? So how do you get uh, distributed networking and security software deployed everywhere? And these are kind of secular forces. Uh, that are going to drive a lot of edge native software development. Uh, and every enterprise has to worry about these two themes, right? Because every enterprise has to figure out how to support hybrid work. Every enterprise has to figure out how to digitize and automate their operations. This is fundamental questions at the CFO, CEO level. Mm -hmm. And I think these are broad themes that are going to drive edge computing. Hmm. Sasha, I think you, you said it. This is fantastic. Very interesting. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights today. Thank you. It is great to talk to you.